Hey everybody, it's your quick step for this week. I'm Tristan and today we're going to go a little dark. For those who haven't heard, there was a terrorist attack in my home city here of Toronto. It was especially strange because it happened about 13 kilometers from where I live. I was actually on the street where it happened, uh, albeit quite a distance away, 13 kilometers as I said but uh, close enough to see the emergency vehicles all rushing to help out. I was also very touched to have several Step Back fans reach out to me to ask if I was okay, and uh, felt a lot of gratitude when that happened. Thank you guys. So the person who committed this attack was an incel, and I'm not gonna talk about his name because he doesn't really deserve the attention, but incels are a perfect example of just how terrible the internet can be. Basically, it's a group of people who have used being rejected by women, they're all men, and have channeled it into a extremely disturbing form of misogynistic rage. The fact that there's a BBC info piece about what an incel is just shows how weird the world is now. So the incels are like an offshoot of like the pickup artist community and uh, it's dehumanization of the worst kind. Uh, it's treating women like they are some sort of commodity, like they are like most literally an object. It has no place in it for women's agency. And if it does, it's in blaming them for just not having sex with men, or should I say not having sex with them. And I do think that it's the real effect of the quote unquote internet echo chamber that we've all been talking about in the media since an orange orangutan got elected president. The internet's weird echo chamber has allowed new ideas to flourish and for groups that normally would have been isolated to have real communities. This includes radicals of all political stripes, even radical leftists and anarchists having a new day that they probably wouldn't have had before the age of the internet because it gives you access to a community no matter what your beliefs are. Unfortunately, the echo chamber also lets you hmm, reproduce your ideas to become spikier and without any sort of acknowledgement of people who detract from you. This allows for things to exaggerate, and in the case of the incel community, it allows for the hurt and sometimes the anger that comes from being rejected romantically to fester into an entire ideology of extremist misogyny that, while it existed before the internet, just see the Montreal Massacre for an example, it has given a community for vitriolic open hatred of women. Combine that with the objectification of women and a bit about masculinity, add in a little social awkwardness and it creates a dark toxic soup that uh, this guy apparently spent a lot of time in. It speaks to a culture on the internet that, with too soon not being a thing that exists, with slurs flying at a thousand miles per hour and people just flat out cheering for the death of people that they disagree with, we've dehumanized other people in our culture. With the incels, they had this portrayal of women that turned sex into some sort of commodity. I think Sean from Sean and Jen put it best where, it's not like the olden days of a conservative aggression against women having sex. It's a aggression against women having sex with people who aren't them. Combine that with a society that puts a premium on male sexual conquest as a sign of social status and a society that constantly tells you that violence is not only okay, but is justifiable. Often the right solution to anybody that stands in your way towards what you want. And as I said, the way that the internet works, since we see people through screens more often than not, it has uh, desensitized us to the humanity of others in a kind of disturbing fashion, where we see talking to people online as a sort of abstract, angry thing rather than a person on the other side. One example is how the alt-right and all the manosphere or all of those people had this weird collective freak out after VidCon in 2017 because they actually realized that the people that they were dehumanizing and trying to destroy the lives of were humans. And because of somebody who emerged from that stew of toxic hatred, male entitlement, misogyny, and dehumanization of people on the internet, we have 
ten people who didn't come home that night. And they never will. So for those who um, have perished, who are, uh, their names are publicly out there, I'm just going to say that um, my heart goes out to the families and friends of Renuka Amarasing, Sohei Chung, Henry D'Amico, Betty Forsyth, Eddie Kang, Munir Najjar, and Dorothy Sewell. By the way, if there are any uh, friends or family members of these people who passed away in the attack last week, uh, just know that even though it probably doesn't mean much from a random face on the internet, that my heart hurts for you. And for everybody else who's watching from the city of Toronto, well, I know we're kind of stealing it from Las Vegas, but um, Toronto strong. I think that this was a serious enough topic that I'm not going to throw in my typical raising money things. So, yeah, it's been a weird week. Anyways, you guys, tell someone on the Internet that you like them. Just be nice to somebody, anybody. Please, we nearly need to be doing that more. All right. Peace. I know I get a lot of trouble for saying that, but I mean it.